we had a sporting culture long before 1788. Um, Aboriginal people were a hunting and gathering society and they had games and some of these games included ball games. Uh, there's an etching of a group of Aboriginal people on the riverbank down there and there's a ball made out of fur, possum skin, um, grasses and an Indigenous player is balancing the ball on his instep in a very much like a Ronaldinho Brazilian pose of, of balancing it. Yeah, I'm uh, John Maynard, uh, a Warramai Aboriginal man from just up the coast here around Port Stephens. Um, I'm a professor um, of Indigenous history uh, and studies at the University of Newcastle and I've had a long connection to football. John Maynard is the author of Indigenous Soccer Tribe, a book that highlighted former Aboriginal soccer greats Charlie Perkins, John Moriarty, Gordon Briscoe and Harry Williams, who played the round ball game in Australia in the early 50s, 60s and 70s. John Moriarty is part of the Stolen Generation. When he was four, he was taken from his birthplace in Borroloola, a remote bush community in the Northern Territory. He grew up in St Francis Home, which was a home for Aboriginal kids who had been removed from their families. But our home was next door to, uh, uh, nearby was a soccer ground and the um, state intermediate team in Adelaide were training and they were watching from the fence of our house and we saw them train and, and uh, they were very intense and they asked us to give them a warm up after their training session. We gave them warm down and after that a fella came around and he said, would you like to play for us? I said, uh, no thank you sir. And then he walked around and asked a few of the others and came around again before I can say no thank you sir. He said, well buy a pair of boots. I said, I'll play for you. <laughs> and that's how I got involved with soccer, with Port Thistle in Adelaide. At that home in South Australia was also Charles Perkins and Gordon Briscoe, and all three would end up having distinguished soccer careers. Charles Perkins played for Panhellenic, now Sydney Olympic, and also spent time in England where he was offered a trial with powerhouse football club Manchester United. Eileen Perkins has shown me the, the, the letter from Manchester United, you know, telling Charlie to come along for a trial. Matt Busby, you know, and Manchester United, and this was 1959. Because Charlie was playing with the best amateur team in England at that time, and they played in the FA Cup uh, amateur semi-final. And uh, Charlie was a very dominant player. John Moriarty is one of the pioneers of Australian football. In 1961, he had the great distinction of being chosen as the first Indigenous soccer player to represent Australia. But soccer was the one that really gave me the inspiration to achieve in this world and fighting for Aboriginal rights in those days, which I was part of. But soccer uh, gave me that anchor that I could move and mix and meet people from all over the world and be accepted as a normal individual because I played a great game, uh, which is a world game, but also to say, oh, you're one of us. And at that time too, playing in the Australian Championships, I was recommended to play in England with uh, Arsenal, Tottenham and Everton. So uh, I was doing my apprenticeship at the time, so I didn't want to break that, so um, I had to do my five years training. Johnny, you know, was first man picked, Indigenous man picked for the soccer route. Sadly, he didn't play, but I mean, because the Australian Soccer Federation was kicked out of by FIFA for poaching players from Europe. After retiring from soccer due to injury at just 27 years of age, John Moriarty then graduated from Flinders University and became South Australia's first Aboriginal graduate. During that time, Moriarty became heavily involved in campaigning for the 1967 constitutional referendum which gave Aboriginal people the right to vote for the first time. That was then followed up by a successful career in both Aboriginal affairs and as an artist. But John Moriarty's love for the round ball game continued through the work of John Moriarty Football which is an education and soccer program that was started in his hometown of Borroloola in 2012. To uh, help those kids up there, to give them opportunities like uh, I had playing the game. And of course, uh, with Borroloola, it's a remote community and we need to do many, many things up there. And education is part of it, well-being, good health and of course, uh, the keynote is uh, soccer. Borroloola is a remote Indigenous community in the Northern Territory. Its population is slightly more than 1,500. There is one oval adjacent to the primary and secondary school. Unlike other Aboriginal communities who play AFL and Rugby League, the main game here is soccer. Over the last two years, 
John Moriarty Football's scholarship program has created opportunities for five talented young footballers to pursue both their education and football in Sydney. For these five Indigenous rising stars, it means uprooting from their small community and leaving their family and friends to move to the big smoke. So it's no surprise that moving from a semi-traditional bush community to a major metropolis like Sydney took some adjusting for these young soccer players. I'm on a big plane, first time going to Sydney. Ah, I was excited. I was afraid when, every time we hit the class, it rocks like that's like I always get scared and all that, yes. Yeah, I was nervous coming down and like it's really different from where I come from. It's really small and like really like remote community and coming down to Sydney where it's like really big and a lot of people and a lot of kids at school and different, yeah, different. When I, when I like came down here, a bit hard before I came the first like flight down here and then I was being shy and go to school and shy and stuff. Yeah, and then I start get friends and stuff. Then Brenda came, and then I just hang out with her and show him, like my friends. Yeah. And the school is a bit bigger and a lot of kids around, and you don't know what area you're going to. Shaden Evans is John Moriarty Football's first elite athlete. In 2015. She was offered a scholarship at Sydney Westfield Sports High School and at the New South Wales Institute of Sport after she was seen playing for the Northern Territory by the Australian women's national team coach, Alan Stajic. I wanted to do something bigger, like come out of my community and go to a different place and keep going with my football, yeah. And try and achieve what I can. We took four boys and four girls to Brazil and one of those uh, kids was um, Shay Evans. And she was 13 at the time when we went for the Brazil World Cup. And that trip there inspired her. At first, like I was a bit scared, I didn't know. And going down, watch the soccer play and train with them, it was really good, like life-changing like experience. And I really enjoyed it, being there with like some of the Barolola kids and the JMF football and the support was really great. Shay lives with the Johns family in Engadine, Sydney. Ali, Carlin, Gracie, and Chris and Sean. And goes to Westfield Sports High School with Gracie Johns. She has a big heart for people. Um, she pushes herself. Um, yeah, she's just inspiring young kids. Oh, take me. <laughs> yeah. Coming back down here for like to inspire young kids, it just yeah, it makes me push myself to be a better person because yeah, it just inspires me. She helps me really well at school, training, even with like homework when I'm stuck. Yeah, and I love how she like pushes me to do stuff and become a better player. Like, <laughs> Gracie Johns is a teammate of Shadeen Evans at Football New South Wales. She is also a member of the Australian Girls Under 17 Nationals team side, and Shadeen says that having her as a teammate is inspiring her to be a better soccer player. Her going to the um, Australian side like helps me to push myself and like work really hard to get there. She has a lot of potential. She has heaps of potential. Um, she's got a lot to learn because up there obviously doesn't have the training that we have down here. Keeping up with schoolwork and training is, gets hard and I find it hard as well. But um, she's taken it on board and she's fit in really well with the elite players and she's become an elite player now, so yeah, she's doing well. For the last two years, SBS football presenter and former Socceroo Craig Foster has been coaching Shadeen Evans at Football New South Wales Under-17 Girls Elite Soccer Program.
and he says after a period of adjustment, Shay has now settled into her new surroundings quite well. Yeah, Shay's um, had a period of adaptation and has done really well because for Shay, she's got challenges on a number of levels. Shay had to come up in terms of living with a new family in a new, completely new environment, divorced from all of her kin and her social network and family network uh, in a new school uh, with a, a much higher burden educationally uh, and also into an elite development program which means pretty much training five days a week. She's now got huge academic aspirations, she's doing extremely well at school, she's very settled in the family environment and all of that impacts on her football of course, that means that her attendance is uh, much better. Her energy systems also took a long time to adapt. The adaptation has happened and Shay's in a fantastic place, uh, is working extremely hard, progressing well as a player and in all the other aspects of her life. These kids coming down here, those other kids, smaller kids, even the kids of their own age, saying, oh, when can we go down? Can we do that too? We know that football is a great game. I can play football just as good as anyone else, and this really inspires them. Pretty, like, excited seeing me going back to community. Like, I feel like that I'm, like, a star. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're very shy at uh, speaking and so on, but uh, they break that down fairly quickly with, uh, with the friendships they make, but also through the football. Delivers ops to go short. Yeoman Dale has a shot. I think that was a cross, Steph. <laughs> well, it went in the direction of the keeper. Jada Matheson Wyman is an Indigenous soccer star on the rise. She's Shay Evans' teammate at Football New South Wales. At just 17, she has played her first full season as the first team goalkeeper for the Western Sydney Wanderers W League team. And earlier this year, she was chosen for her first Australian national team squad. Oh, it was awesome. It was amazing to be uh, just even brought into camp and to train with some of the best players in Australia. It was great. It's a dream to be in the Matildas in general, just to keep working towards my goals, just to keep working harder and become a better footballer and goalkeeper. And uh, hopefully one day I can go to a World Cup or an um, Olympics. It would be amazing to do that. At her first Australian national team camp, Jada got to train with her idol and fellow Indigenous goalkeeper, Matilda star Lydia Williams. Off the set piece, Edmonds right at the top. Oh. What a great shot and a diving save by Lydia Williams. Oh yeah, she's a massive inspiration to me. She's, um, I've watched her since I first started taking up soccer. Um, she's done amazing things around the world and it's just great to, I, when I went into camp, it was amazing just to train with her. Jada's coach at Football New South Wales, Craig Foster, has so much belief in Jada's talent that he says the 17-year-old has the potential to be one of the best goalkeepers in the women's game. In terms of her qualities as a player, well, she has exceptional talent, exceptional, uh, exceptional reflexes, and uh, perhaps the best that I've seen in the female game, extraordinary. She's got agility and dynamic movement, so that her ability to get to, you know, shots that look unsavable is at times amazing. One of Jada's earliest games in the W League for Western Sydney Wanderers pitted her against Indigenous national team striker Kaya Simon. Here's Kaya Simon on the angle and she scores for Australia. He's onside. Simon finishes. My first game back was against Sydney FC and um, yeah, we played against Kaya and just I love watching her play in general and to play against her was just awesome. Another Indigenous player out there is just, yeah, it's great. With Jada Wyman and Shay Evans, 
The possibility of replicating the careers of fellow Indigenous stars Kaya Simon and Lydia Williams could happen. And perhaps one day in the future, both these rising Indigenous stars could even take over their spots in the Australian team. I think we could <laughs> when we grow up now. I think we could uh, just keep working towards our goal as both uh, becoming better footballers and yeah, hopefully the chance comes for us, yeah. Even though she's only a teenager, Jada feels that it's her responsibility to be a role model for aspiring young Aboriginal soccer players. I think it goes without saying uh, what Shay wants to do with her football and just to inspire others and it, same with me. I, I think we uh, want to work towards uh, helping other Indigenous players and just to expand the game. I think it's one of the main reasons why we do this. In Australia, more kids play the beautiful game than any other sport. But when it comes to Indigenous representation at the elite level, Australian soccer is still suspended in its own dream time. The latest figures show the Indigenous population is at 3% of the total Australian population. But, when it comes to certain sports, that number increases dramatically. The Australian Football League, or Aussie Rules, has 9% Indigenous representation, while the National Rugby League figure is even higher at 12%. But, when it comes to soccer at the elite level, football is lagging, with only 1% representation in the A-League competition. Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to you on country. We are the Jajuan dancers. We are here um, proudly supporting our Mobia for putting on a major event. It was only last year that Indigenous footballers from across the nation gathered in Shoalhaven, southern New South Wales, to compete at the first ever National Indigenous Football Championships. Touch there. Ring one way, then the other. On the angle. What a oh, fish! What a goal. <laughs> that is a superb goal by Brittany Ring. 2 0 Illawarra. The three day tournament brought together 24 Indigenous men's and women's teams from around Australia to compete for the coveted prize of National Football Champions. And in another first, male and female players from the National Indigenous Football Championships will be picked to compete at July's World Indigenous Nation Games in Canada. And later this year, Nara will again be hosting the second attempt to put soccer on the Aboriginal sporting agenda and to the nation's attention as well. Wonderful to uh, have a national championships for the first time. I think it's going to inspire a, a new generation of uh, Indigenous kids, both boys and girls, uh, to play football. Um, we know that whenever Indigenous athletes uh, take up a sport, uh, they excel. Careful in these conditions. Struck well. It's in. What a goal. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. There's no doubt football's been uh, behind the other codes uh, in terms of getting the ball at the feet of Indigenous kids. Uh, but things like these championships is all going to lift the profile. This tournament, uh, you know, means a lot culturally. Um, you know, the the fact that we get to play with our, our, our people, our mob, um, it does bring something different, you know, more, more deep inside. Uh, you know, you see in the NRL, you know, the, the, the trickiness, the, the, the bond between other Indigenous players that you play with, um, you know, and it's very similar here. Uh, you know, we, we get to be ourselves.
chance to swing it towards Donaghy. Won it well in the air. There's the only goal through Jade North. This is Jade North. He currently plays for A-League side Brisbane Roll and is one of Aboriginal soccer's major superstars. Potential problem at the other end. Kagawa, crunching challenge by Jade North. The 35-year-old no longer represents Australia, but during his national team career, he played 41 games. A-League 2008 champions, Newcastle Jets! And in 2008, captained the Newcastle Jets to their first A-League grand final. Currently, North is the only Indigenous player in the A-League and he takes his role as an ambassador at the National Indigenous Championships very seriously. Uh, an opportunity for myself to be a role model within the community, um, but also to a role model for the football game itself. Uh, just to, to show my passion, that's why I'm here, because I'm passionate about it, and we've got to make the game grow. And it's growing, it's getting bigger and bigger every year, the A-League's getting bigger, and you know, it's not going to be long before we see some, you know, two or three Indigenous boys in the, in the Socceroos. It's, it's, it's important because it's, you know, it's like a grassroots pathway for, for, for young kids into adults to get the opportunity to, to showcase themselves. You know, sometimes um, it's hard to get, a, to get noticed from the bush, but when, you, when you're together, when you're here as one, you get to showcase your talent, what you're made of, and you know, it's just a great, it's a, it's a, it's a great meeting place for everyone to, to catch up with everyone, to play football, you know, you, you, to see friends and family that you haven't seen for years as well. So the, the, whole, the whole concept is brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 Hyundai A-League Champions, Melbourne. During the 2009 A-League Grand Final, then Labor Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and Football Federation Australia made an announcement that Indigenous players would make up at least 5% of spots in national teams and major competitions by 2019. And we've got two years to go. The only Indigenous player we've got in the A-League at the moment is the great Jade North. So, yeah, you know, we've got, we've got a fair way to go. Uh, and even when I played with the national team, I was the only Indigenous player at, at that one time. So, um, you know, I mean, you look at the other codes and you look at Rugby League, for example, the, the Kangaroos, the, you know, six or seven are, are Indigenous in the starting in, lineup so you know I really want the game to grow in this country to my dream would be to see you know six or seven in the national team. If you're going to succeed you've got to take the opportunity of building those networks nationally you've got to establish indigenous people's involvement at a grassroots level nationally you've got to have indigenous liaison officers brought into the game nationally and you've got to encourage that it's going to take money, it's going to take time, and it needs support. But if they want to get Indigenous players at that high level, that's the level you've got to go to. You've got to do the big picture stuff. So when we have an Indigenous Australian playing for, let's say, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, um, Liverpool, and representing Australia, we're in a very proud position. And I think that's going to do more for the country uh, in terms of recognising, accepting some of the sordid elements of our past, but the beauty of our Indigenous culture, than anything else can do. And it can happen if kids are encouraged to play the game the skillful way, the Indigenous way, and it will happen. The Socceroos have pledged to grow football in Indigenous communities, donating $90,000 in appearance fees to the John Moriarty Foundation. The funds will be used to provide a future star from a remote area a pathway to elite football. I just wanted to say uh, hi to all the Socceroos, everyone in camp there. I'm here with um, some of the scholarship kids from the JMF program that you guys have um, been able to see your way forward to help financially last year and we're here to say a huge thanks for that. I'll tell you a little bit about them. This is Shay. Shay is in the under 17s elite development program here at Football New South Wales. He's a, he's a great talent, has been in Sydney for a couple of years. What dreams do you have that you are playing football? Playing for the young Matildas and going into the Australian squad. Yeah, are you going to be a Matilda? Yeah, I want to be a Matilda. Uh, we've got Lloyd, who recently is down here in Sydney as well. What's your football dream? Oh, to become a next soccer room. We've got Tremaine, fantastic young talent. My dream is like about be become a soccer star and like trying to be in, in soccer rules and stuff. 
and we've got Brenda. Yeah, when you're together, do you guys talk about that maybe one day you could all be playing for the Socceroos and the, and the Matildas? Yeah, Tremaine always talk about that with me and we always talk about it. And what are you saying? I say, yeah, I feel like, but on, we just need to train more hard and play more hard and then we might calm us down. So, just want to say thanks to you. You know, it was last year when I stood in front of you and asked you to put your hands in your pocket and be generous for these guys. Well, this is the face of what you've done and uh, you should be very, very proud of the contribution you made. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks Socceroos! <laughs>